The 10th devlog has finally arrived and we have things like clothings for our occupations, skinning animals, we have more guns as always, my voice is finally in the game, and I bet you didn't see this coming, but we can actually cut down trees. Let's get right into it. So after we've been waiting for quite some time, we got this big juicy 10th devlog coming right to our doorsteps and we are ready to get down and see what is inside this nasty video. First things first, Deadman Flats is going through some optimization phases and it is going to be the first properly integrated town in the game. They added more structures for you to go through like apartment complexes and motels. Canmore is going to be the largest town currently in the game and they quote it as extremely large so that is interesting to see what's going to be like and it is almost completed. The underground mining complex made by Nomad is going to have a lot of interactions and a large area to cover on foot. There's going to be crashed commercial planes, a retrievable black box so you'll hear what happened during that phase of the crash. On the tool belt we got some additional info on what some of the items will function like. The keyring will allow you to store multiple keys that will give you access to different doors or including vehicle trunks. Wallets are going to be additional storage for currency such as the Canadian dollars and key cards for accessing high tier loot locations and one of the examples they mentioned was the armory in the police station. Now What's interesting here is that they didn't really specify what these Canadian dollars will benefit us, so maybe they'll have more information about that in the future. However, right now Canadian dollars to us seems like it's not going to do well, unless by speculation that we will be able to spend these Canadian dollars in one way or another. The devs had to remake all of the items in the player's inventory, including the weapons, which certainly paid off because it's been certainly fleshed out and it's looking more clean. And inside the inventory, we're able to put items inside items in a nutshell. So if you had this large cooking pot, which they showed up in this video, you could just happen to put more things inside there. And depending on what clothes you wear, it can give you some additional weapon slots, such as the vest, where you can slide in another knife or pistol. There is going to be this realistic item search in containers, so if you happen to just go in and loot for something, it is not going to pop up right away, so you'll have to just search as if like you are in real life, and you'll get items one by one, and it's not going to take too long where it's going to be a drag, luckily, and making these noises will actually cause others around you to hear it as well, so if you are trying to be sneaky, you're going to have to think twice if you're going to have to look through these containers. And they really nailed the sound when you go through these containers. It just happens to feel so appealing. Oh shit. Yo, there's some juicy stuff in here. And after all this time of all the placeholders that we've been seeing, we finally got some official character models and clothings in the game. Here is the list that you are able to wear. In terms of headpieces, there is bunny masks, some sort of SWAT helmet, a beanie hat, fedora, a hockey mask, perhaps it was made from scraps, a police hat, bandana, Mosca helmet aka Tachanka, headphones, and a variety of gas masks. In terms of occupation, I was only able to see the firefighter and police officer outfits. The rest seem like it can apply to any other occupation, so we'll see what that'll be like in the future. There are police vests, a variety of backpacks, and lastly, a bunch of shirts with different colors. Moving on to zombies, they finally have the ability to surround the player now, so instead of just having that linear train motion, they'll be able to split off and find different types of targets for them to attack. And the biggest news today, honestly, is that my voice is in the game. I was really blown away once I heard about this, and I'm really thankful and honored to be in the game as well, as a zombie of course. So every time you kill a zombie, you remember who you're hurting. All jokes aside, I'm really excited to hear how it'll turn out once we play. I was really trying to put as much effort as possible to a point where like my voice was dying at the end of the rehearsal, so I think it'll turn out great. Nonetheless, I'll be excited to hear myself chasing after me. <laughs> 
Now moving on to animals, we have more threats than just zombies and bandits. We finally got bears, so make sure to not aggravate them as much. They added in the system to gut animals so you can get their skin, their bones, and they even described the antlers. So we'll have to see what we can craft with those items. They really mentioned a lot about curtains in this segment where there are different types of curtains and how you can block out lights and visibility and blocking yourself out. But keep in mind if you're lighting your house up a bit you can definitely see your shadow and people will still be aware of your presence based on the feedback they said they removed the old claiming system where you had to go to some garage and then flip the switch to reclaim your base they said this in quotes how they re-implemented it with support proclaiming a majority of the buildings and that your claim is only as strong as your ability to protect it. So in some way, you're gonna have to work your way up to make sure you have the ability to claim everything, the whole part of your building. And it's gonna be interesting to see how this works. There's obviously gonna be an incentive to protect your house and make it stronger. And of course, making it safer to prevent anybody from breaking in. They mentioned also how you can disassemble or reuse existing furniture that you happen to find in this new base that you are building. So if you happen to find a house with a bunch of furniture, it'll be at your benefit. Now, my favorite news here above all is the procedural aiming. This here allows you to perform any type of animation while you are ADS. So this means while you're aiming in with your sniper and you're reloading, you no need to aim out of your scope and then do the action it'll all do the work while you're aiming you'll also be able to switch between scopes and iron sights if the gun supports it and they removed the bullet spread which is a definite meta change where instead of you just hip firing and hoping for the best you can actually think about where you're aiming with your hip fire and shooting the caveat to this is that when you are pointing the barrel and happening to move left or right or looking left and right your gun will sway to that direction so the best way to go about this is that if you are standing still and looking straight you'll be able to hit fire dead on and what's a devlog without having new weapons we have here the svd dragonov which is a backer weapon and is yet to be the most powerful sniper at the moment there's the 416 assault rifle we have the 22 rifle that now has a 110 round drum magazine so spray at your will the 12 gauge shotgun has the ability to use bug shots slugs and flare shots and they're completely interchangeable so that means you could use all three in one reload if you feel like they fully implemented the p90 grenades can be thrown overhand and underhand the over and under shotgun is making a comeback compared to what the Kickstarter had to what we have now. We are definitely getting an improvement. The M14 rifle is coming as well, which is another backer weapon. Of course, bless up. This is going to be another interesting weapon to use. Now, in terms of vehicles, we have interactive radios. Your tires are able to become flat now, so be aware of that. And what you can notice here that wasn't specifically mentioned in the vlog is that you are able to change seats while you're inside the vehicle. They reworked the menu UI and multiplayer backend so it'll feel more fluid for sure. They reworked the dynamic weather system and soon they'll be integrating these corresponding soundscapes that they have with their new sound engineer. They updated their radial menu system. They rewritten the voice over IP system. I'll give you a really good example of what I mean ahead of this video. They brought in this admin system now for any owners or administrators of a server where these higher ups can observe players teleport to players bring players to you and send them back and they can kick or ban players for any regular players there is this command called slash request where they are able to say something to these owners or administrators now that is where the 10th devlog really ends then afterwards there is raw footage for players to look at to see what it's like to play in the game there is definitely a lot of role playing in here so any of you rp fans will definitely enjoy this game for sure now that is not the end of the video because there are some footage on screen that you may have missed or not even noticed when watching the devlog i looked through the entire 33 minute video and i got a whole list for you guys to see we have players standing on top of vehicles in 
it's looking very seamless as if it's like a Far Cry game. Standing on top of other players vehicles will be definitely a way to go. You can break glass by jiving with your gun and by speculation I'm assuming that you're able to jive these guns towards zombies to back them off. If you look at some of the scenes in the vlog you can see how the player becomes disoriented after getting hit by some object or zombie. I definitely like the effect here and it'll make some scenarios really intense once you are injured. So we'll see how that's going to be like once we play the game. You can destroy lights now with your gun which is something to acknowledge because some games happen to disregard this feature and I think this is something vital for a zombie survival world. There's a quest tab in the inventory so you'll definitely be able to keep track of what you are going to do next. Here's the biggest one that a lot of people missed out on for sure and six minutes in the video when the player is above the pig you can see that for a split second right there and what you can see in the inventory is a saw now this got me to speculating what we can do with a saw because using it as to kill zombies is possible but something i wouldn't really imagine so on my discord which i have in the link in the description if you want to come i showed this off to some of my fans and i actually got the devs to tell me like yeah that's a saw and we are gonna use that to cut down trees so now we could use this to our benefit to collect wood in the forest and we'll have to see what type of items we can use to craft with that. And you can most likely see these trees falling from a far distance. So if you are going full out timber, I prefer you to do it in a safe area. Crawling zombies are a thing now, so make sure they're dead for sure. There also happens to be a blood pressure meter, so keep track of your blood pressure or something's bound to happen. We have blood bags with different blood types, so if you are happen to losing blood, I prefer you to use your own blood type. And lastly, there's this organ cooler, so I wonder what that is going to be used for. Now, before I end this video off, I want to talk about this voice over IP system that is going to be really awesome to hear in game when you are playing with your friends and other strangers and such. They really demonstrated this well on their raw gameplay footage in the devlog. I wanted to put up some highlights of how that is being used here and as well as some underground tunnel highlights that is really cool to see and I believe that you guys will enjoy it as well. Nonetheless, I'm going to stop talking now. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video here and as well, I'll see you guys next time. Alright, so show them, tell me a bit more about your mind. Like, what can you do in it? Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen this, so... So yeah, so here's the um, first room we have. Um, pretty clear bone. Turn on the lights. Very nice. Oh, sweet. Placeholder model. If you only have power, you should be able to open it. So from time to time, you will have to reactivate uh, such a giant uh, air fans, uh, such as um, this one in front of us. Holy shit, that thing is way man. Crowd. We're out of fucking bed. <laughs>